Hey guys, John here. Today we're in the Arturia CS80 V4, and since this week we're kind of been focusing on classic sounds, we're going to be making a classic pad because I guess we all love those sounds. So this is the pad that we're going to be making today. Okay, so let's get into this here. It's nice and soft, it's sweet, it's warm, it's kind of cozy, right? So uh, yeah, let's go to our advanced section here, disable the the effects here, because it can, can be a little bit deceiving, right? And then let's go ahead and turn off our reverb as well. So now we just have this here. So it's basically the same thing. It's just, uh, it's not as big. It's, uh, it's, it's a little smaller and that's okay, right? It's okay for it to be a little small. We're gonna make it big though, don't you worry. <laughs> okay, so, good lord. Okay, so new preset here for our default patch, right? So basically the first channel or the first oscillator, we're not gonna be using the saw wave, but we are gonna be using the triangle wave because it's just nice and smooth. Smooth and small and big, my goodness. Why do you guys even still watch this? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go over here to the high pass filter and bring this up to about 47. So 47, something kind of like that. And no resonance for the high pass, but for our low pass, we're gonna go 144. So pretty low down there, right? 144, something right about there. And then for our resonance, it's gonna be 0.444. So that's weird. Is that a lot of fours in this? 144, good Lord. It's weird when stuff like that happens, right? So I guess all fours. Okay, so on our main one here, let's bring our attack level all the way to the top. And let's take a look at this here. So we're basically using a lot of attack, right? So this one is 366, which is pretty much almost at the top, right? It kind of looks like it, but it's really not. So 366 for our attack, which is okay, kind of right there. And then our decay 4.57. So bring this up 4.57. Where are you? There we go. Eh, 455. Five, that's fine. And then for our release is kind of high up as well, 1.93. So let's bring this guy up here as well. And we're not really gonna hear this yet because we have to focus on the uh, on the amplifier. 1.93, is that what I said? Man, I gotta do some like memory exercises, good God. Okay, so let's move this over here on the side a little bit and kind of look at our envelope here. So we have our attack 1447, which is pretty substantially up there, right? I'm taking a little bit of time to get up there. Jeez, those are, oh my God, I gotta stop doing that. Okay, 875, it's gonna be default, so we can just, I guess, uh, that's so weird, you double click and it goes back down from the default preset. What are we here? Good Lord, 875, oh my God. Okay, 875, here we go. And there are sustains all the way at the top, and then our release is pretty substantially up at 816. So now we're gonna actually, uh, it's actually pretty close there. So we got the basic kind of thing going, right? We have a slow envelope opening up our cutoff, and then we have a slow envelope opening up our amplifier, which is all good and great. So basically here, what we can do is now copy this down below here because we kind of want to keep this envelope. So I did that little Roman numeral one with the arrow pointing down and this tone selector, which copies the first channel to the second, which is a very, very handy little feature there. And if you look over on the main one here, we're actually using the triangle and the saw wave in conjunction with each other. So... But hmm, we don't hear the second one, and that's because we have to mix this in here. So what do we have? 0 0.504. Something like that here. Okay, so now we have to change a little bit of the tuning as you can kind of see over here. So our first one is gonna be default and our second offsetter is gonna be up one octave. So let's bring this switch down here. So now we're much closer in the ballpark.
So if you notice something, we're kind of moving a little bit to left and right in the speakers, and we're also having a little bit of the portamento. So let's go ahead and add a portamento at 0 0.015, and really you don't need that much, right? So it's a tiny little amount, it's a tiny little amount, which is okay, like I said. So that's cool here. Now this motion of the synth's ocean, it's kind of moving back and forth, and that's due to our sub oscillator, which our speed is 4.69. Oh, good God. Ah, uh, sometimes. Okay, so we can see here that we're actually using the mod wheel for this, right? Because here we have pan, VCA, VCF, and VCO all at zero. So this isn't just working on its own. We're actually using this in conjunction with the mod wheel as this is 0.196, which comes out of the box like that. So if we reset this, uh, this mod wheel, it's pretty much the same patch, right? So our pan is gonna be at 0.464. So we go over here and bring our pan down to 464. And really, uh, we're almost there, four, six. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so, okay, so slow. Okay, 464, and we really, uh, what would we have, VCO, six point something, 6.49, I think that's like default. Yeah, okay, so that's really all we have to do. And now if we raise our mod wheel, let's play some kind of thing like this. Then we have that kind of motion, and it's pretty much the same thing here. Go to the other one. Okay, so we're pretty much there, right? So that's kind of all we really have to do for this. It's not too complicated of a patch. So now let's go check out our effects. Let's turn this on, and really we're using two effects, tape echo and some chorus. Really the tape echo kind of just makes the stereo field, or like I guess the stereo field, just a little bit bigger, kind of makes the sound a little bit longer, I suppose. Oh my God, I'm not even trying to do this anymore. Uh, and then we have chorus, which enhances the sound. Maybe that's a better, better way to put it. Ah, it makes it big, whatever. Okay, so tape echo, we have our sync at one over four, which is pretty much default. Our intensity 0 0.350, which again is default. We're actually not gonna be doing ping pong and I don't think we're doing any fine. So it's pretty bare bones as far as the effects go. And then we just gotta increase our dry wet to about 36.8. Even with a synth like this that looks like it has a bajillion sliders and all these options and stuff, you really don't need to do that much to it. Which is actually kind of a nice thing, right? I mean, we do have a lot of options, but we don't have to use everything. It just kind of just sounds good by itself. I guess maybe that's the uh, that's the attractive part of the, about this synthesizer. So we don't, we're not gonna be using this reverb because we're using external reverb, but we are gonna be switching this out to a chorus. And for some reason I found that especially, this is kind of more a my opinion kind of thing, that with this synthesizer, the Juno chorus doesn't sound as good as this regular chorus for some reason. I don't know why exactly that is. Every time I try the Juno, I kind of like, okay, this is nice, but then I always go back to the built-in default chorus here. I don't know why. Maybe it's, actually, I don't even know why. I'm not even going to try to guess anymore. Okay, so this one's 21.6, and really, there's not much we have to do. 21.6. That's really it. It just has such a smooth, I guess like cool, smooth sound, which is like CS80, right? Cool, smooth 80. Oh God, my jokes are stupid. Okay, let's go and put our reverb on it. That's basically all we have to do for this one. Okay, so like I said before in the other ones, other videos this week, in case you didn't catch it, so I'm using Valhalla Vintage Verb and I spent a little bit of time to dial up a, a sound or a reverb preset that kind of works with the CS80. And if you have Valhalla Vintage Verb, go ahead and maybe pause the video and you can dial in these settings if you would like to. And But be sure to update to the newest version because I think with 3.0, this is when they introduced the dirty plate, you know what I'm saying? And that really sounds good on synthesizer. So that's what that is here. So we're gonna route this sound and turn on our effects. And what do we, let's route this here. So yeah, see what it sounds like here.
And like I said earlier in the week about the kind of the different things that we kind of want to focus on for this synthesizer to really kind of get almost an effortless but good sound out of this thing right? we don't have to utilize every single knob and slider and button to get something that we like. Some of these knobs here, so this Brill and this Resonance, so these two kind of, it's kind of nice to map those to sliders if you have those on your MIDI controller. So these two are really nice to play kind of dynamically or maybe even to automate these because check it out how, how, how nice it sounds. And if we put our mouse over it, right, offsets the channel one and two high pass and low pass frequency cutoff. So this was with no additional resonance. So if he brought up our resonance, something kind of like this, 0.560, something like that, and now it's gonna be much more pronounced. And if we don't want that modulation, we can always turn our mod wheel down and then try that again. Yeah, but something like that is a lot of fun to map and slowly kind of move this, right? You don't have to move this super fast. It's just kind of a little bit more expressive way because this synthesizer is really more to be played expressively, right? With different velocity, aftertouch, stuff like that. So yeah, if you'd like to get this patch, there is a free link in the video description below and it can be yours. Hopefully you learned something and uh, man, sorry about the jokes today. I don't know what's wrong with me, but anyway, here we go. Hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video.